Good morning and afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Autodesk HSM Friday Fast Track Hangout. Today we have our special guest, Carl Bass, is going to tell us about some of the sweet projects that he's been working on in his shop. We have Al Watmau and uh, CJ Abraham live with him at his shop, ready to start broadcasting. So we're going to leave the webinar in a little bit. You guys can join at our Autodesk Cam YouTube site but to watch Carl tell his story of his, some of his projects, machining projects. It's going to be awesome. Before we get started with that, what I'd like to do is walk through really quick for any of our new attendees today in our community about our Fast Track program. I highly recommend you joining our Fast Track program. For those of you who are new with our integrated CAD and CAM solutions, uh, HSM Works, Inventor HSM, and Fusion 360, we have seminars that go on across the U.S. all year long. Uh, you can log in. You'll get access to these CAD to CAM to CNC seminars, live classes going on at our partner centers as well as schools. Um, webinars that you can gain access to. Our schedule of webinars, join live. Our team of experts who do classes live and plural site, and you'll gain access to this as well. So I highly recommend joining our, our Fast Track program, which leads us to Autodesk University. Every year, Autodesk puts on a set of training as well as seminars, keynote speakers. This year, as well as last year, was really CAM-focused. We had lots of classes on hands-on, going into program apart. John Saunders was, was there this year, was able to help people run their programs for the first time. So we have a lot of CAM-focused classes, seminars to join, and a lot of these fast tracks that we do lead up into Autodesk University. So if you haven't joined up yet or if you didn't register, I highly recommend you do. So I highly recommend you sign up to our fast track. And so with that, I'm going to ask a few questions real quick of you just to get an idea of how many of you have joined us at Autodesk University. So if you wouldn't mind, please take a few minutes uh, to vote with us. It's going to be at the Venetian this year uh, from November 14th through 16th at the Venetian in Las Vegas. So again, I highly recommend uh, joining us at Autodesk University. It looks like the polls are, are pretty much in. I'm going to, I'm going to share this with you real quick. Uh, it looks like we have a pretty good set of our group who would like to go. They want to be able to know how to get there. I, you can Google. I can bring up on the screen. You can get the link that you can join uh, Autodesk University. Another quick question that I'd like to ask you, here, what's going to help you drive your growth? This is a great question we'd like to ask. If you wouldn't mind, take a few minutes to uh, poll. But what is it that's going to help you and your company drive growth when it comes to HSM and our integrated CAM? This information is important, especially when we have our developers, where we can focus in the future with future development to know what's going to help you and your company grow. It's also helping us to know what kind of content for training uh, for seminars and webinars going forward. So this information is really important to us and our community. So we really appreciate your giving this back and voting. It looks like the polls are pretty close to being closed. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. So it looks like we have a pretty good percentage of our audience is looking into two and three axis that, uh, to working with our integrated CAD CAM, getting it over to your CNC machine. So we'll make sure that we, we do keep our good focus on that two to three axis machining. And it looks like a, a good portion of you is really interested more into positional four and five axis. So these are our places where we'll focus in development, make sure that we're able to help support and help drive your growth so that you're able to use our tools much more efficiently and be able to get your good parts off the machines a lot quicker. So thank you for voting. We really appreciate it. So with that, I'd like to invite you guys to go over to our main Autodesk Cam, or it's actually our Autodesk HSM YouTube channel. Uh, posted a link there in our chat window where you can click and get right into our YouTube channel. So there's our link. Again, you can click the link. And please head over there and you can watch live as Carl and Al and CJ are take a tour, take you on a tour in some of the projects that Carl has uh, has been working on um, and do that live. Is, um, I, we've had this shop for a couple of years. We've had the shop for a couple of years and over the summer we got uh, the whole building. And so we've been doing this huge renovation. And starting in July we did a big renovation because uh, we did seismic upgrades. 
put solar on the roof. The whole power, the whole shop is solar powered right now, and we built out you know the rest of the shop. So we're kind of in the tail end of it. Um, we're just doing some things to finish out the shop and you know um, make it seem like home. And so the two pro two projects that are going on right now, one project. Up to the mezzanine, we had to build a staircase, and so uh, we, we wanted to use all the tools to do it, of course. And so we ended up coming up with this kind of folded origami staircase, which we'll take you out and show um, Basically, just took uh, some plate steel, cut it on the put it on the press brake, bent it up, and welded it in. And, that, and, and here, here you can see that here you can see it. Um, one, of the, one of the things that was relatively tricky on it is this support which keeps them super stiff is a really steep angle and we didn't have any dies to do it and so we actually machined it we, we machined up a die to do it and so we'll show you the die that's sitting in the press break and if all goes according to plan we'll actually fold we'll, we'll, we'll fold up uh, some of the handrails too so the stairs are done now we're on the hand we're on the uprights and the handrails and so that's one of the projects that I'll show you up there um, one of the fun things about this is we got to use uh, the new sheet metal stuff in Fusion. Uh, don't be an exaggeration. Um, it was great that we got to do it. We definitely have uh, explored the limits of what sheet metal at this point can do, and we're looking for like more updates on sheet metal. So especially uh, on the water jet, we have to sort of hack the workflow and use the flat and yeah, the flat, the, and get yeah, that yeah, getting get, get it, getting real patterns that you can cut. Yeah. When you can get to that point, that that's awesome. But uh, the very first model that we did of this, which I'll show you the prototypes out in the shop. We didn't actually build that one. Um, that one was done in kind of old fusion, and we faked sheet metal, sheet metal and, and, and you know, just, just you know, kind of extruding stuff and filleting stuff to make it seem like sheet metal. So it was really nice to actually get sheet metal, but we definitely ran up to the limits of what what can be done in it today. And the second thing we do is uh, here is um, we're just at the very end. We built a uh, we built some fancy kitchen cabinets uh, right around this wall here. And uh, you know you gotta spend all this time in the shop. You might as well have a you might as well have a nice kitchen. And uh, so we we built a kitchen and we're just making some hardware on it. And so I'm making um, aluminum handles. Uh, most of the handles are out at being anodized. Here was the, here was the model for them. Got a couple different sizes of them, and so we'll we'll show you that. But we can also show you a bunch of the rest of the projects in the shop here. There's a bunch of printed 3D metal stuff. There's some uh, there's a this go kart, um, and there's lots of the little things left and right that we can show you. Perfect. So um, you, you you want to walk down and take yeah, a look? Just, here we can start with a couple of the first things that we're finishing out here. So this is a little kitchen we just completed, and so we built this. Uh, this, this is the metal shop. I got a wood shop down the street, and so over at the wood shop we built these cabinets. Um, they're all made out of teak, and we had this stash of teak that was laying around. And so we did that. Um, this was the handles. You can see we're still in the process. We we're trying to figure out drawer and door handles. Um, made a whole bunch of sizes. Everyone had an opinion which was the best size. Um, so we tried a bunch of them. We ended up with this over here. And you can, sure. kind, of, you can kind of see this one. You know, you got the anodized on it, and then we cut some grooves in it afterwards. Um, I, think, we, yeah. I think what the machinists are really going to like is how it was fixtured. Yeah. So, so we'll see that when we go to the lathe. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you how we did it. It was it was a little bit it was a little bit tricky, um, and so that's what we did here. The other thing we're doing is we're just about um, we're going to build a uh, table and chairs since this seems to be the place in the shop where everybody hangs out. It's kind of like the kitchen at home. Um, okay, so that was the, that was the first that was the first chair, um, and this is the second one. We just water jet out the outline and made some wood. You can see there's a, there's a rendering that was done. Very cool. While we're in here, I might as well just go through some of the things that are in here. Yeah, sure. And then we'll walk out and we'll look at the stairs and all the machines and stuff. Um, this one you may have seen, a uh, bunch has been written on it. I think there was just a Fusion blog post on the other day. There was, yeah. Um, on this, this is the clock, um, which says to me it's 10.15, but um, it, takes, it takes a little skill to read that thing. Hours are in the LED, and 
these things, these little fan, the wings turn. Here's a. Isn't it when you reset it, it flips them off? Uh, you, want to, you want to go into yeah, that? So there, there, there's kind of the mechanism. So you have this thing that's turning, but there's no central mechanism. Core. And when you go into demo mode here, there you go. That's cool. <laughs> so that's like it. Well, we should show them the way to get the vice on and off. It's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. So here, here, yeah. Here, here's the house. Walk here. Here, here's the house mill. It's a VM3. Um, Chris had this uh, clever contraption that we made. One of the things is these orange vices are great, but they're like they're just heavy enough. To putting in and out, putting you in and out of the light. So I'm kind of curious for the comments, how do, how do you guys get your vices on and off, and is there any other uh, neat little tricks? So we have, we, have, we have two tricks to get them in and out, although one of the tricks uh, is wayside. So one is, we built, we built these little things um, that will lift them in and out, and over here, we can just look at We built this table where the top of the table is. But it's also like the perfect height for me to work at, so I, I always steal it for over here and we don't store any vices on it. Um, you'll see when we go over by the welding, we're building another one because... So if you missed the audio, you're saying is the table is the exact same height as the table, the machine to easily slide stuff on and off the, the bed of the machine. So that's our lifter. So maybe when Eric so watches he, this, he's going to realize you should just put an eye in the middle of the vice to <laughs> exactly. lift it up. So then we can pull up on there with our with our hoist, and then these just come off. All these guys doing, I just lift the vice. Yeah, come on, lift the thing. And then All that these comes people out. People are saying ten out of ten, they wouldn't recommend lifting the vice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially not after hernia surgery. Exactly. No. You've had one. Oh, both of us have had a hernia. As have I. I've had a double hernia surgery. Like CJ's the only one here that has. So all of us once thought it was a good idea to lift the vice. So I'm not going to get hernia surgery. Yeah. I'm not going to get lifting vices. The lathe is next. There's a big empty spot over here, though. Yeah, there's a there's a really big empty spot. I'm looking for recommendations. Okay. I'm looking. I'm looking. mostly been set up, uh, set up right now. I had just finished doing all those pulls. You know, there was some way to hold this. So here's what these things look like, and I'm trying to put the grooves in after I get it back from the anodizer. Um, and so what I ended up doing is making these little collets. Um, and, and basically what it does is it fits in there, and then I screw it in, and that kind of serves as the index, and then I put it in there. Um, I have one of those flex pallets in there, and I put it in there and I squeeze it. So th this, this thing was, th this was a fun way to do it. It was, um, you know, I certainly could have made it out of metal. Um, Al and I were sitting around thinking about it, and we yeah. finally said, the hell, why don't we just 3D print it? And so what was nice about this is able to easily 3D print it. I did it on uh, the Mark Forge, which is, uh, this material is a nylon with embedded uh, fiber carbon. So it has short carbon, chopped carbon fiber in it. Yeah. It's relatively strong, and by changing a few of the parameters about how it prints, it was definitely strong enough. A um, bunch of people gave me grief about the concentricity of it. It's within a couple thousandths, which, uh, for my for my kitchen poles is good enough. And often you can design around that anyway, right? So yeah. the, the operation you're doing here is just facing. So yeah, it's it's a facing matter. operation. It really it really doesn't. Um, you can see it at 
in the grooves if uh, okay. if you could sit there and rotate the grooves and you know put your instrument in there you could figure something out but uh, it's it's actually pretty good so uh, th th that that was a that was that was a fun way to do it. There you go. Oh, and John says he's got a whole high school class watching. So that's, oh, cool. That's cool. Sweet. Very cool. Works perfectly. You know, we made the little, we made the little lip on it so you can you got the little lip on it so it indexes itself. Self registers there, and with the registration there, it's in the same place. It all works. So. Um, so the way the shop is set up, it's basically there's three, three or four parts of it. Three parts of the shop is there's the machine shop, where we have these two hosses. We have we have a manual lathe over there. We'll be getting a five-axis mill over there. There's on the far side is kind of where the projects are, okay. um, just you know like space to just work, work on stuff. Inside. And then we can see the fabrication side. Okay, so. Here's the here's the stairs. You saw the you saw the fusion model of it. Oh. Very good. That's cool. So we it's in the uh, it's in the splash zone of the water jet. So we had better we had better pretty quickly get this thing uh, painted up, um, but it, but uh, j just hung it off our central stringer, and then if you look, uh, oh, well, actually while you're here you can see this is the bend um, right here that was that was too tight, and we had and we had to make our own die for it. It's actually getting ready to do it now. Oh okay, <laughs> he's he's gonna set up over there and. We'll bend some of these. So there's a question about the handrail. That's actually what's getting made right now. Okay. Well, we for a while we said no handrail, no handrail. Doesn't see. It doesn't seem like a good idea not to have a handrail. So if you come on over here and you look back, you can see what we're what we're building over there. So we started up on the platform and basically. They were really kind of fun to make the uprights because um, what you basically did is we cut out this pattern on the water jet and for the two bars, it made, made these elliptical holes okay. and so then when you fold it, they become circular. Ah, see. So I just cut this out on the water jet and so you see this is the little ellipse and then line these up on the, on the brake just with the gauges so you can take the water jet and put little tick marks in there where you need to line the brake up. Oh, interesting. So if you look on the stairs, too. We did that on the stairs. And you can see when you do the fold, what happens to the little tick mark there. It's okay. So, yeah, you can see up there, there's the welded ones. So the parts we folded go into it, they get welded to another bracket, and then they get put up there. Um, and that's where I said it. And if you look down here, you can kind of see the side view. Those are the ones that get bolted on to the, mm -hmm. they just get bolted on to the header. Then you can kind of see the people creep look at them. Very cool. And what Chris was saying is that wood beam up there is actually arched. And so we started bolting these on, but we realized because they're so tall, they were going to be horizontal and the beam was like that. And so all of a sudden we realized, but since this is parametric, Let's just uh, let's just make them approximate the same uh, curve. So I'm gonna make sure everybody heard that the the roof is got a got an arch to it, so the the railing is going to have a curve that follows the arch of the roof. Yeah. Okay. Should we go see the sample stairs? Is, is what's yeah, in progress? Yeah. Uh, By the way, while we're here, I'll show you the world's most over-engineered iPad holder. <laughs> okay. There it is. <laughs> Okay, this only took 
milling this uh, milling this on the on the mill. Th this part was turned and milled on the lathe, and then these are these little brackets were printed on the 3D printer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, super rigid. Yes. There's got to be some reason for doing it yeah. this way, where. Uh, like just nailing a piece of wood up wouldn't have, wouldn't have worked yeah, well. That wouldn't have worked Here, well. I'll show you, show, you, show you this and then we can go look at some other projects. So here you can see the original design for the stairs it was actually just this ribbon that we were going to hang off the wall. Um, and we actually built a version of it. So you can see the original design was going to mount off the side of the wall, uh, and, and it switched to a design where we had the we had this. This turned out to be really strong. Um, the only thing was that it really, you know, here it's bolted to a, a masonry block wall, and in that wall that where it eventually got attached, we needed to put the stringer in the wall, and that wall was all so we just looked and said, not worth ripping the whole wall apart and rerouting everything. And I really like the way, uh, I really like the way that central stringer looks on it now. Yeah, it looks super cool. And so over here by the welding stuff, over here by the welding stuff, you can see it. But here, here's, this is the first prototype of the stairs. Well, we're moving to the second one. We tried that one, then we tried this one, and uh, then we moved on. We moved on to this design. While we're here, I can just show you. Here's like kind of the welding area. There's one couple cool things here. One is um, I told you I like repurposed that uh, cart that Chris built for moving the vices in and out. Yeah. Because it's the perfect height for me to work at. So um, I'm, wor I'm working with my cousin and my nephew, teaching them how to weld, and we're building another one of these carts. Very so, cool. th so this is cool. This is the, this is the first part of that card, and so we'll we'll have another one around. Um, some of the other things, just because we're getting started and we got the shop up and running now, fun things like this. Here's a um, place to mount a big vise. Um, you know, everybody talks about like three D printers as being great rapid prototyping tools. I actually think a water jet and a MIG welder yeah. is like the greatest rapid prototyping <laughs> tool. Whether you know you saw like with the stairs or like you know just making something to hold the vise. Um, something to hold all the fixture stuff. Oh. All of these things were kind of done the same way, you know, uh, cut a bunch of pieces, water gin a couple pieces, and uh, weld them together. You got wheels on it so you can. By the way, I, I think my very first shop was tiny, and I put wheels on everything there, and I could move everything in and out, and I've never kind of stopped. Yeah. Everything, like I think everything the more, has a wheel on it. Everything with a wheel, wheel is, was a great invention. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did it. Okay, here's a, cra here's a crazy thing over here. Um, I'll show you the results of this. This is basically an idea of taking a MIG welder and turning it into a metal 3D printer. Oh, very cool. Okay, so basically, if you think about it, and you look at the plastic 3D printers, um, they're basically, you know, like an FDM printer. It's taking a wire of plastic and melting it. This is doing the exact same thing, but it's melting the metal wire. And so rather than, you know, fusing together two pieces of existing material, this is just a welder attached there. Um, here, let, 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 me, let me get one of the... In the way to oh, sorry. So that was printed on the... Uh, it was printed on this. With basically a whole lot of MIG bead. It's, it's all bead. There is no other material. This is just welding wire. Yeah, that's cool. And what I think is amazing is if you look you know, closely, it's a reasonably good surface.
Very quick near net shape anyway. Isn't <laughs> very it? quick near net shape. Something like this probably took like 35 minutes to print. Nice. What type of uh, fast. What type of tolerances can you hold with that? Couple, yeah, couple <laughs> a couple of microns. A couple microns. Yes. I can, you tell me which micron to be in and I can cover that micron. Awesome. <laughs> that, that's, that's about it. And a couple next to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> This one uh, is like kind of our second version of doing this. It has a little spindle on it. So, for the guys who are concerned with microns, <laughs> there's this idea that one of the things that we'll be able to do is actually lay down a bead and then trim it, or anything that needs a finished surface on it, we'll be able to polish that. So up. lay a bunch of weld bead to get a near net shape and then, and then machine it after the fact. Yeah, and alternate between lay down a bead Cut it, lay down a bead, and then you always have access, no matter how complicated the job is. That's cool. So anyhow, um, we're just... I see some 3D printed ends on this thing. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of little machine parts all over. Um, but this, this thing's a, it's a pretty interesting idea. And, you know, if you look at... I, I mean, I think metal 3D printers are going to be really important. And most of them cost half a, you know, half a million dollars or something. Yeah. You know, because they're laser-centered you know, metal powder, and the metal powder is relatively dangerous to have in the shop. And this this thing is like standard materials. It's in every shop all the time anyway. Exactly, and you can do it out of any material that a MIG welder. So, aluminum, stainless, mild steel, all, all of that works. So you can make it out of whatever material. So, you know, this is, this is in the thousands of dollars kind of experiment instead of the much more expensive one. I like the dual ball screws on each side. So is there yeah. a table at the bottom so you can eventually have a plasma head on it or something? Or what's no, the table at the bottom has some water in it. Yeah. One of the things we found is cooling this is critical. Oh, okay. And so it's a reservoir for the water. If you look carefully surrounding the MIG head uh, on it, there's actually a little uh, water shower. Oh, so the blue, the blue hose is showering water to keep yeah. the part cool. Right, exactly. Ah, so it's a shower. Yes. Yes, we built a very cheap shower head. I hope everybody hears that. There's a shower around the MIG to keep things cool so that as the pool gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's not getting okay. super hot. Okay, let's go look at a couple other projects. So now we're headed over to the third side here. There's part of the shop. While we're here, we, we, we got to look at some of the furniture. Yes. This. So this, uh, I think a lot of people have been in this industry for a while would like this. They've seen this. This is, th this is something I did together with my buddy Monkey. You guys may know him from Monkey Like Shiny, Jeff. Jeff Tiedekin, yeah. yeah. And so this is uh, com a combination act. And I think you mentioned the beginning, but you've got a thermoid over in the other shop. Yeah. Uh, and so this is, what the, this is what the seats look like. And uh, then we made this top on it. And my favorite part is putting in this cutout because the table is so heavy that the only way we can lift it is with a lifting strap and the forklift. Oh, nice. Is that clearance? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's just some clearance from the lifting strap. Awesome. And then there's a matching bench over here. Yeah. Bench doesn't have any wood on it, though. Very important. I like that. Oh, right, yeah. And you can, of course, adjust the angle. <laughs> okay, over here, my friend, my friend Clyde's in it. This is this is an electric go kart. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit full of stuff right now. So this is a go kart. It's an electric go kart. My son Willie built it, and it goes about, it's geared up to go about 60 miles an hour. And so the thing is totally fun, you know, it has no suspension, it's got no differential, it's two inches off the ground, and when you go 60 <laughs> miles an hour, and you know, you accelerate in a couple seconds. It feels up, a lot so, faster. Yeah, it feels it? really fast. Yeah. Anyhow, okay, so what are all the wires on it now? So the wires on it, we had this idea, Willie went, Willie went off to college to go uh, build Baja, and he left me with the go-kart to play with. 
So with a bunch of friends, we've been making the go-kart drive autonomously. And so we just took it up to Thunder Hill Racetrack, and we're trying to drive it autonomously. And what we did is we trained it with a neural network of YouTube videos. So we took YouTube videos of people who had driven the Thunder Hill track work, and we're driving it autonomously. And if you know anything about these autonomous vehicles, they have a ton of sensors on them. They have, they have LiDAR and cameras and GPS. What we, what we did is we drove around the track just using that cheap webcam on top there. Oh, wow. <laughs> but there's a wrench to go with it. Hey, the wrench is over there. Okay. This is, this is how stuff gets built. Okay, so we went out to the track and we had mounted this thing here. It's got this very clever laser cut with the adjustable angle in it so we could point the camera at the right place. You can see the, uh, the, 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 the adjustable the camera mount. Along with zip ties. There are more zip ties on here <laughs> than anything else. Okay, but here was the deal. So we're, we're trying to look out and see what's going on. And on the first couple of runs, it's a little bit janky. Yes. Yeah, it's vibrating, and so we just needed more mass on it. And so we're looking around. We're, we're out at the track, and we go, what do we have that has mass? And so we took the biggest wrench out of the pack. Nice. Uh, and we bolted on. Bungee cords? Bungee cords, yeah. No, bun bun yeah bungee cords bungee. helped. We were kind of using whatever we could. <laughs> Iterate um, as quickly as you can, right? Yeah, over here we actually have um, where we mounted the processors. You can, you can actually see down below, we actually used a fishing weight for the same kind of thing. It's a piece of foam <laughs> and a fishing yeah. weight just to give it mass. Hey, cool. it's dense. dense. You can see all kinds of cool things on here. Um, so there's a couple people want to know if the YouTube videos taught it how to drift. What's it? No, <laughs> no, that, that's next. That, that's a good question. Um, just getting around it without killing yourself. By the way, I think my favorite part is if you look in the middle, there's actually the machine is out there. I appreciate there's an e stop. Oh, e -stop. E -stop. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, what happened is it would drive, and you had no control because if you look down here, what we did is we took a servo and we hooked it up to the steering wheel, and so you have no control. So you're in this thing. It's got like. 300 pounds of lithium-ion battery around you. And so like the last thing you really want to do is crash this thing. And our only override is we had an Xbox controller that if you hit the <laughs> Xbox controller, it took over the steering from the computer. Oh, wow. If we had programmed it right. And I think yeah. this was awesome. this was one of the first mill turn parts you worked on down in here too, right? Yeah. I remember yeah, talking yeah, about Yeah, one. there's a mill turn and welded thing down there. And then this was fun because the we went out there last year uh, to Thunder Hill and drove it around the track, uh, but we burned out the engine actually. It was a 110 degree day and it got so hot that we were coming down the stretch and the magnets in the motor delaminated and it started throwing the magnets <laughs> and it split open the casing. And so, uh, so this year we have a new improved 3D, 3D printed shroud and a very high-end computer fan on there. Uh, so Arian's asking, he's in the Netherlands, I believe. He's yep. asking that these acrylic gears. What are the acrylic gears? There's a number of things on here. Okay, so what we really wanted to do when we were driving this thing autonomously, it, the neural network was building a model of the go-kart, like the vehicle dynamics model was getting built, and we wanted to see if it correlated. So this was just a cheap way to sensor and measure what the angle on the wheel was. So when we drove it manually, um, you can measure it that way. And then we could actually measure when we were doing it with the... Um, uh, so yeah, you're right, server. Arian. It's it was, so yeah. it was just a cheap way to do it. There's a number of things in here that we did. There's another one on the back there. There's an optical readout so we could, until we figure out how fast the shaft was turning. If you look over here, Al, you can see it. Okay, I'll come around. So, so we got like black and white tape on the axle, you know, to make an optical encoder. Yeah. Super clever. A lot of the stuff is like, you know, like on the cheap. So anyhow, um, so Clyde sits in it and drives it. Um, <laughs> Clyde often sits on my porch too. I actually, I have a friend with a security business and he's got a, a large stuffed grill that sits in the security van with him. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he sits on my porch all the time and like the delivery people come and look. And, by the way, 
um, just to say, like, every, every project that never goes, like, totally right. Here's the war wound from one uh -oh. of its first. That's one of its first drives. Did Clive have airbags? <laughs> it smacked right into a fence post. And it turned, actually, the entire go-cutter, like, into a taco chip. It just folded up. Um, that, that was the first phone call to Willie where I had to break the news. I've been using your go-kart, and it's going pretty well, but... Uh, we might have broken it. <laughs> I'm going to take everything off and straighten the frame. Uh, cool. So that was cool. Here, let, let's just go look at a couple other projects. And, okay, a couple things in here. So this is a chair that was 3D printed. So it's a chair It's made out of stainless steel. And it was 3D printed in the exact same way that I showed you with the gantry. This one was actually done. We took the MIG welder and put it on an industrial robot arm. But the technique was identical. Uh, the industrial robot arm just gave it, gave it a little bit more reach. And so, uh, but nothing different about it. So it's all stainless steel. All stainless steel. Um, you'll see. Ah! Probably weighs 70 pounds. Oh, it's a stain one. Yeah. yeah. So it, now, one of the things we did with this one is we uh, we polished it up, which led me to what I'm working on now is I'm trying to build a robotic grinder and polisher. So if anyone has any ideas, um, basically what I, what started to happen is I've been making all these things on my CNC machines um, or you know these kind of machines, and they require a ton of sanding, polishing, grinding, uh, finishing. And I realized, look, I have all these expensive machines. They've taken over the really fun part of making stuff. Yeah. And it's leaving me with all the crap. <laughs> so all I do is sand and polish and grind. And so I decided, OK, it's time. So I'm, I'm in, the next project that we're going to make is a robotic grinder. That will follow, you know, that will follow curved oh, surfaces okay. and stuff. Carl, we had a question, is that solid or hollow? It's hollow. It's hollow. Yeah. Oh, no, I think there's, there's pads on this. So, on so everything like that, uh, that uh, vase that he showed us earlier, it's the width of the bead that grows it up, right? Yeah. The legs are so hollow. The legs hollow. are hollow. Yeah. Yeah. Hollow, yeah. yeah. Um, Getting close to the top of the hour, we should take yeah. a look at the table. Yeah, so let, let me just show you. So a couple things. So I told you in the other in the other shop, I have a five-axis router. Uh, has a big work envelope, kind of oh five feet by ten feet in a four-foot zig. And so I made you know I made things like this chair with my friends, um, and the seat was all made on there, which could be done on a three-axis or certainly done on one not that big a Z. But then I started working on things that required a bigger city. And here's a ta here's a table that I just recently I just made two of them, uh, one for, one for this shop and one for that shop. And uh, what was fun about this is you can see there's three big kind of lobes, the three legs. You see the top lobes. The, th those were all machined individually, and then it's all brought together with a sliding tapered dovetail. So you just take these three pieces, you put them up together, and these things are tapered, and as you drive them in, they cinch up, together. and they pulls, it pulls the whole thing together. The last really fun part of this thing was, in order to make this uh, arm that would support the height of the table, uh, we cut it out of the water jet, but I didn't really want to cut and waste all that material on the water jet, so we cut a piece from about here, about this big, okay. and then we cut these arms separately. So this one was cut this way, and, and, the then there were three, and then there were three arms, three arms right. and then we made a little fixture, and you can, you can barely see where it's welded. In the welds there, yeah. yeah, so that's where it was welded together, so we didn't have to take a gigantic piece and do it. But we got like kind of the precision of the water jet to fit it in there and do that, so. Very cool. Okay, so those are kind of the projects around here. I mean, there's, there's plenty more, but maybe next time. That sounds show good. you the next one and show you with a robotic grinder. So I guess uh, I guess that's it for this one. Is there any questions that we should answer? Yeah, let's see here. if there's any questions. By the way, here's the 3D printer that I've been using uh, for. So this is the printer that printed the. Uh, yeah. Here you can see these. You can see the quality of the parts coming off that.
Well, apologize for some of the background noise. Obviously, it is a shock that is used. Um, People are milling things. There's milling going on right now. <laughs> right, so I guess with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this wrap this up. Thank you, Carl. Okay.